My parents came up in the 1960s, early 1964, I believe. Dad came, then Mum came, and eventually I came with my brothers. I was 10 when I arrived here. <laughs> I didn't know anyone else on the plane, but we were looked after by an air stewardess. We just got on the plane. Just felt sad because, you know, you're saying goodbye to grandma, aunties, friends, and then you were coming somewhere new that nobody had actually told you about. For some of us, we didn't grow with our parents, so you didn't really know your parents. You knew you had a mum and dad, but you may not have seen them for a very long time. I came to England in 1956. I was 16 years old. My father came to collect me from the airport. We took a train to Paddington to Oldfield Park. It was in June when I came. It was quite cold, so I was a bit disappointed in the weather. But it was lovely to be here with my mother and father. But um, when the winter time came, I, oh, I didn't, didn't like that. <laughs> Although they were here, I wanted to go home, to back to Jamaica. So you can imagine all of us coming off the plane in these summer clothes and having to walk across to the terminal and just being very cold and just thinking, what is this? Because <laughs> you knew what ice was, again, you weren't, that wasn't explained to you, because ice, you had an ice cream or you had ice and a drink, but to be in a place that was even colder than that ice, it was like, take me back on that plane, I want to go home. <laughs> I came here 1960, 3rd of March, oh, that's right, and I was 24 years old. Then we get to Melksham, that's when I started to realize now that I drop right down where I shouldn't. <laughs> you know, I think we had a car, so we came back down. And as you're driving, you're just looking at, you said, the gray, grayness, you know, the fog, because it was all smoggy as well. What were you going to go home to? What was home? You know, you didn't even know what home was. I sit on the bed, and my two knees rest on the cooker like that. And I said, oh dear. I wasn't looking for this. I said to my husband, I said, we can't stay here like that. I said, this is terrible. And I said, if it was a return fair, we would have turned back. But I haven't got no alternative, so I have to just stay put. <laughs> well, I would say I'm the second or third generation. And Dad come over in the early, early 60s had us in the 70s. At his first job when he came to England, it was Green Park shoveling coal. And he just thought to himself, shoveling coal? I left a hot country to come and shovel this black stuff into that. What am I doing? But he wanted to do it to better himself. And dad said he's gonna stay here for three years and mum said two. He stayed here for 50 odd, yeah, 50 odd years. He stayed here. So it must have been something, but I sure know it ain't the weather. I didn't go to school here, but I, I worked at a, um, a nursing home called Western Lodge here in Western. It was a psychiatric block. And then after I leave the um, Western Lodge, I went to St. Martin's to do my state and rural nurse training. And then I stayed on there working um, in Ward 2, which is a gynecologist ward for uh, about seven years. My mum worked in nursing, she was an auxiliary nurse, so she worked at St. Martin's. And then eventually she moved from the St. Martin's to the RUH. And working nights, because nights was for many people, but you'd make more money than working in the day. I started to work at the hospital in 1965. We were at the whole infirmary, not not at the Royal at the time. After me there for about seven years, then they moved to the Royal. I wanted to work for the RUH a long time ago. I, I wanted to be a porter ages ago. I just got that thing about me where I can just somehow make someone smile. Well, it all started going back from mum. Started down at the Min as a domestic. And then my sister decided she wanted to be a, a nurse down there. She's been there. How many years, I don't know, but she's been there a long time. From my mother's um, stories of how she was treated, names she was called, and also, you know, they didn't have the health and safety as they do now, like OIST. So you had to lift people, so she had a bad back from a young age. So I came 
to work for BEMSCA, which is working with older people and supporting them through the healthcare system. And whilst I was doing that, I took a job at the mineral hospitals where I just worked in the catering side. The government opened a way that SCN nurses could do their midwifery training. So I went to the sister and said to her, I would like to go and do my midwifery training. And she said to me, oh no, you won't be able to do it. You know, you're not, you won't be able to qualify to do this training, you won't manage it. I said, yes, I will be. So after that, I, I did it, we passed through. After that, I came back to the RUH. Well, I finished in 2000. I done 30 years altogether. I was 79 until 2000, the RUH. In the healthcare altogether, I were 41 years. It could have been more, but I leave some of the years off. <laughs> I met a girl and she said, oh, she sobbed him. She remembered me. Oh, she came running out of there. You're Edna's daughter, aren't you? I said, yes. I said, oh. I thought myself, I better keep quiet. I don't know what went on. <laughs> Remember, you delivered my baby, 41 year old now. I said, really? Oh. I said, thank you. She said, thank you, thank you for looking after me. Yes. So they still remember this face. <laughs> the legacy of Windrush is for those people who took that opportunity and took, you know, to, to leave a country, leave sometimes good jobs, but for those that did come and did put up with some of the hardship that they did, and for us to come after them, you get to an older age, you realise, you know, all the that they had done and all that they'd put up with they felt that they had helped the nhs you know with the cleaning it wasn't about going in and mopping but they did so much you know the food that they prepared and the different areas of work that they work in so we're just not going to talk about nurse we need to talk about every aspect of the nhs and i'm sure many of them are so proud of what they've left the flare of the caribbean flow because you've got to remember england was going through a rough time the black people come over and sort of give England a little bit of boost, you know, start dressing different, talking different, spicy food. That's what I see, Wimrush, integrating people, bit of flair, colour, and liven up England a bit. They brought a lot of vitality, strength, knowledge, wisdom, courage. Oh, wow. <laughs> they brought everything that human humanity deserve, kindness, really care. The care was really marvelous. It's such a joy to go to work. It was such a joy. It's like going on holiday. <laughs> because everyone is there is focused and we all, you know, work together. Are you wait, I love it. I just love it. I love it. Monday mornings, I love it. Everybody's miserable. I'm cheerful as Larry. You work up here, you gotta be try to be cheerful, you know, because we're all a team in it together. It's the NHS, it's, you got to help you. It, because if I'm healed, they have to take me there. And I have to stay there until I get better. So you really can't cry it down. You, you have to help to build it up because it got, it got to keep going. Quite a few younger people. If it wasn't for you and uh, and the uh, Auntie Merrill, I wouldn't be where I am. Mm. Makes me wonder. It's not me. It's not me, you know. I said, really? Do you think that of me? No, can't be me. <laughs> Tears come to my eyes. My mum would have been proud. She would have been very proud of me working. What, he's working at the hospital? Yes, she would have been very proud. And my dad, knowing that, oh, he didn't do so well at this, that, and the other, but now he's working at the hospital. They both of them. It is good to remember the past and then come back and live on now to see the future. The older generations have left a lot for my generation to think on. They've left us well-educated, I, I believe. 
still remember your culture, still remember your roots, and still remember where you come from. And always remember, your mum and dad struggle to get you here and bring you up. So always remember that. We're proud that they made that journey and that made that journey for us. Just talking about Windrush, it brings some sadness and it brings some happiness as well. So.